the, the samples that were brought back by the six Apollo missions to the moon have enabled really unprecedented studies of the history of the solar system. So it's the Apollo samples that really open this window into the, the... In the annals of space exploration, one mission stands out like a cryptic enigma, Apollo. One, zero, all engines running. A triumph of human ingenuity, it sent men hurtling through the inky void to touch the very face of the moon. Hidden in the shadows of that celestial success lies a secret so profound and so controversial that it has kept NASA from returning to our lunar neighbor for decades. But what secrets could possibly be lying in the lunar shadows? And why has the moon become a forbidden frontier for humanity's return? Join us on this journey as we uncover the untold truths of the Apollo astronauts and the reason NASA has never returned to the moon. We had a race to the moon uh, and now it's a race to Mars, but now there's a lot more players in yes. this game, right? Yes. I mean, we've got the Chinese. Right Back in the early 1960s, the United States had big plans. They were gearing up to send humans to the moon. The grand reveal to the public happened when President John F. Kennedy spoke to Congress on May 25, 1961. Among his words, he declared, I think we should totally go for landing on the moon by the end of this decade. Let's make it happen. The mission? To drop humans on the moon and bring them back home in one piece. Just a few weeks before Kennedy's talk, Russia stole the show by shooting Yuri Gagarin into space aboard a space capsule. He did a little dance around Earth and landed without a hitch, earning him the title of the first person in space. America wasn't exactly doing cartwheels over this, and they were eager to rip their own stellar accolade, which was the first person on the moon. This lunar mission was more than just a hop, skip, and jump. It was America's chance to redeem itself in the global space race. Five years after Kennedy's speech, the first Apollo space capsule was ready to rock and roll into orbit marking the next chapter in the quest for interstellar glory. On January 27, 1967, down at Cape Canaveral Spaceport in sunny Florida, a practice run unfolded before the big rocket launch. What was meant to be a harmless trial for the three astronauts turned into a heart-wrenching disaster. The trio found themselves stuck in the space capsule for hours, and then, out of nowhere, a blaze ignited. The space capsule's door wouldn't budge, sealing the fate of astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Roger B. Chaffee. Tragically, they perished in the flames before their cosmic journey could even begin. The entire nation was rocked by the news, but despite the somber atmosphere, Kennedy kept his eyes on the lunar prize. A mere 18 months later, Apollo 7 soared into orbit around our blue planet, marking a successful chapter in the human hunt for the stars. In March 1969, when we were still figuring out how to land on the moon without tripping over ourselves, the Apollo 8 crew stole the show. These guys were the first to peek at the dark side of the moon, and it wasn't just a cosmic sightseeing tour. The Apollo 8 mission, lost in the shadow of the moon landing, was a bit like a lunar detective story. A bunch of astronauts blasting off to check out the mysterious far side of the moon, the part you can't spy on with your neighbor's fancy telescope. According to the Friends of the Paranormal and the Mystery Buffs, Apollo 8 had a secret agenda. Rumor had it that something not so friendly was lurking on the far side, and NASA wasn't about to let the dark side keep its secrets. There they were, on a lunar journey to unravel the mysteries of the moon's shadowy side. Telescopes couldn't spill the lunar tea on this one, and wild whispers hinted at something wicked hiding in the moon's eternal darkness. Apollo 8 was more like a cosmic detective mission, trying to shed some light on the moon's enigmatic dark side. Back when Kennedy and NASA decided to send Apollo 8 into space, we wondered if they were thinking about all the what-ifs. Today we might get some answers. The astronauts, Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders, officially said they didn't see anything weird during their 10 spins around the moon. The moon got a green light, considered safe, the first time humans flew that far was a success, and it seemed like nothing was stopping them from actually landing. In the same month, the Apollo 9 crew tried something cool. They practiced moving from the space shuttle to the landing capsule while orbiting Earth. Then, Apollo 10 did a repeat in lunar orbit, but they skipped the actual landing part. 
On the sunny morning of July 16, 1969, something absolutely incredible happened. The Apollo 11 mission kicked off its legendary journey from the Kennedy Space Center. A spacecraft carrying two astronauts who were basically celebrities by then, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. After cruising through space for a whopping 76 hours, Apollo 11 finally made it to the moon's orbit on July 19th. On the following day, precisely at 1.46 p.m. local time in Houston, Texas, the control center buzzed with excitement as the lunar module, carrying Armstrong and Aldrin, broke away from the command module, where Collins was holding the fort. Two hours later, the lunar module gracefully landed on the moon's southwestern edge of Mare Tranquilitatis. Armstrong, being the wordsmith he was, declared, the eagle has landed. But the real magic happened at 10.56 p.m. when Armstrong uttered those famous words just before his foot made contact with the lunar surface. That's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. And just like that, history was made. In just under 20 minutes, Aldrin made his way down from the spaceship, leaving his mark as the second person to ever touch the moon's surface. We were smart enough to not say, uh, Houston, there's a light out there that's fine. What unfolded next became the stuff of legends. Six more Apollo missions took off, with five of them flawlessly touching down on the lunar terrain. Apollo 13 faced a bumpy ride when, shortly after launch, a service module crashed. It led to a nail-biting rescue mission as they had to speed back to Earth, having missed the chance to leave their own mark on the moon. In December 1972, Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt closed the lunar chapter, becoming the last to stroll on the moon. And since no human has taken a lunar stroll for over half a century, curiously, NASA never felt the moon's gravity pulling them back. And so the moon waits, undisturbed, for the next human to take that giant leap once again. Beyond the moon missions, there lay a vast, unexplored expanse waiting for the touch of human curiosity. The pioneers were not astronauts, but rather robotic adventurers like Pioneer, Mariner, and Voyager. They ventured into the distant corners of our solar system, unraveling the secrets of celestial bodies that had remained mysteries until then. The moon, once the star of the show, had lost its luster. Human interest dwindled, and the Apollo 17 landing, once a spectacle for millions, became a quiet event watched by only a few. While the world had collectively held its breath during the Apollo 11 landing, Okay, it's go there, Capcom on the hot fire. Okay, all flight controllers going around the horn, gonna go for undocking. Okay, retro, go. Fido, go, guide, go. The subsequent missions struggled to capture the same level of attention. Whispers among experts hinted that NASA, having faced a nerve-wracking ordeal with Apollo 13, was treading cautiously. The fear of potential astronaut loss loomed over every Apollo mission. It seemed like the space agency, having pushed the boundaries, didn't want to press its luck indefinitely. The era of lunar exploration was fading, making room for the allure of more distant and mysterious cosmic frontiers. The U.S. government finally spilled the cinematic beans years after Apollo 11 did its moonwalk. In this footage, we catch a glimpse of Richard Nixon donning his eulogy hat. And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes, but in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never... Paying respects to the astronaut trio, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. If things went haywire up there in space, your TV screens might have flickered to life with Nixon's face, delivering a pre-recorded message. In his speech, cue the weird vibes, Nixon showers praise on these cosmic daredevils, highlighting their courage. According to him, these guys didn't kick the lunar bucket for nothing. They did it for the greater glory of the nation. Hold on to your helmets because the Apollo emergency program had some jaw-dropping deets. NASA, the big shots behind the spacesuits, officially gave Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins a cosmic ultimatum. If things hit the fan, they had two choices. Embrace the abyss or write their own lunar obituaries. On January 5, 1972, President Nixon dropped a bombshell. No more moon landings after Apollo 17. The Apollo program faced a major setback because the government didn't chip in enough cash. 
The moon missions in the 60s were too expensive, and NASA's wallet took a real hit. The whole show, running from 1961 to 1972, cost more than $25 billion. Adjusted for today's prices, that's over $150 billion. It became one of the priciest government gigs ever. Despite burning through cash like it was going out of style, Apollo gave us some serious brain power in science and engineering. Plus, it scored a big win for the U.S. against the Soviet Union in the space race. After over a decade of pouring money into NASA to get to the moon, folks started losing interest. Taxpayers and politicians alike were more interested in the idea of dropping loads of money on lunar missions. NASA's big plans for a home on the moon got a hard no when they asked for money, making it impossible without the cash or a strong go-ahead. Instead of setting up camp on the moon, NASA had to pause and rethink things because they didn't have the money or the green light. They had to switch gears and focus on space missions that didn't break the bank. The idea of sending folks back to the moon and setting up shop permanently was just too pricey with the new budget limits. The people at NASA had a big worry. What if the brave astronauts, venturing into the great unknown, faced heart troubles because of the wonky gravity on the moon's bumpy surface? It wasn't just the craters messing with gravity. There were other cosmic concerns. The main headache on NASA's mind? What happens when humans hang out in low gravity and soak up extra radiation for a really long time? During the Apollo missions, our space explorers only got a taste of lunar life for about three days. That's like a cosmic weekend getaway. No one could predict what months or even years of living on the moon would do to a person. Astronauts setting up camp on the lunar surface, thinking they're on some sort of space vacation. What if the lack of gravity and the extra radiation turned out to be like a silent health ninja, sneaking up on them over time? NASA saw it as a bit like putting the crew on a planet-sized quarantine with serious threats to their health and safety. NASA wasn't all eager about turning the moon into a second home. The risks and mysteries were like a cosmic puzzle they weren't ready to solve. The Apollo missions showed we could pop over to the moon for a quick visit, but turning it into a place where people could actually live? That was a whole different ball game. It was like trying to figure out how to keep humans alive in a place that basically said, nope, not hospitable here. The challenges were massive. Health stuff, engineering headaches, and all sorts of other unknowns that needed solving. NASA wanted to be extra sure before sending people to the moon permanently. Extended lunar missions seemed way too risky without testing with automated probes. Sadly, there wasn't enough money for the research needed after the Apollo missions. This made the dream of setting up a human colony on the moon even tougher. The lunar conditions were no joke. Hostile temperatures, no atmosphere, and constant threats from micrometeoroids made it all super risky. Any building or habitat on the moon's surface was in constant danger. There was always the fear of things breaking or getting damaged, which could be really bad for human life. And to make things worse, there weren't many backup options in case of an emergency. Living on the moon was way more than just a science problem. There were tons of other challenges beyond just figuring out the engineering stuff. Building homes on the moon was a big puzzle. We had to figure out how to make shelters tough enough to handle the lunar weather. And as if that wasn't enough, we had to create smart life support systems. Those systems had to be like our moon buddy, keeping humans alive and well. But that wasn't the end of our troubles. We needed crucial things like oxygen, water, and fuel. Without them, a lunar home was just a fancy box. Getting these essentials was like searching for treasures on the moon, and we had to find them to keep our lunar base ticking. Then there was the head-scratcher of how to send people to the moon and back. It wasn't just about a cool rocket ride. We had to haul big stuff into lunar orbit to set up shop on the moon. The problem? We didn't have rockets strong enough for the job. After successfully landing astronauts on the moon by 1972, NASA faced a tricky challenge. The lack of continued political backing left the space agency in a bit of a cosmic limbo. Before this, the entire human spaceflight culture was like a rocket fueled by the ambitious goal set by President Kennedy to touch the lunar surface by 1970. This goal had the whole nation on the edge of its seats for over a decade. But once NASA ticked off that lunar landing from its to-do list, things got a bit spacey. The agency found itself floating without a clear direction, 
or a sense of cosmic purpose. Reality hit them hard. Budget constraints and the need to adapt to new missions set by lawmakers and the people at the White House. It was like Apollo, the golden child of space exploration had completed its epic saga, and now NASA was trying to figure out the sequel. There was no national cheerleader to rally the troops for more lunar adventures, or to build on Apollo's legacy. The transition from focusing on the moon to figuring out the next big thing was a make-or-break moment for NASA. It was like they needed a new mission control to guide them through the vast cosmic possibilities that lay ahead. The agency had to change its game plan when the political focus on human spaceflight shifted from the moon to low Earth orbit. This move left some people disappointed, especially those who were all about setting up lunar colonies. However, NASA had to roll with the punches and adapt to this new reality. At the same time, space exploration enthusiasts started suggesting different goals, like creating reusable space transportation systems, setting up space stations, crafting cool scientific instruments, and launching robotic missions to other planets. Instead of just doing the same old thing, NASA's leaders decided to spice things up by taking on fresh challenges and looking for new opportunities to advance. The shift away from the moon wasn't just a random choice, it was also influenced by changes in what the American people wanted from space exploration. After the excitement of the Apollo moon landing, the hype for lunar settlements started to fizzle out. With the public losing interest, it became tough to get consistent support for more lunar projects. Nixon and his team really shook things up at NASA. They didn't just sit back. They pushed for teamwork in space missions, like they were all about teaming up with other countries. The Apollo-Soyuz test project, where Americans and Soviets joined forces. It wasn't just about sharing high fives. They shared resources and know-how too. This tag team approach didn't just bring nations closer. It pumped up our space smarts and skills, taking space exploration to a whole new level. The year 2000 rolled in, and NASA's piggy bank got fatter again. Thanks, Hubble Space Telescope. We're talking over $20 billion a year. And guess what? No one's waving protest signs. Nowadays, Americans are NASA's biggest cheerleaders, proud of the U.S. bossing it in space. NASA's cooking up a cosmic comeback to the moon, and they're calling it Artemis. It's been stashed away in NASA's secret drawers for ages, collecting lunar dust. No one was keen on launching a fresh lunar mission until SpaceX and Blue Origin rolled up, shaking NASA from its lunar nap. In 2017, NASA dusted off the Artemis blueprints in a hurry. Why the rush? Word on the space street was that Elon Musk had his eyes set on a lunar rocket joyride in 2018. Suddenly, Artemis got a VIP ticket to the moon party. Fast forward to 2024, and Artemis is set to rock the lunar stage again. Artemis shuttle launches turned into a cosmic game of musical chairs, getting delayed left and right. Whispers floated around that NASA might bail on the whole lunar event. Artemis 1 took off in November 2022, sans humans. International interest got a little nod, the real fireworks will kick in when Artemis 2 lands on the moon in 2024. The moon, a celestial enigma, has been beckoning us to uncover its secrets. Recent research not only challenges the notion of a tired, barren moon, but paints a vivid picture of a scientifically vibrant world. Cutting-edge probes like the Lunar Orbiter have gifted us unparalleled glimpses of our lunar neighbor, sparking renewed curiosity about its origin and composition. Contrary to previous assumptions, the moon might have once been a petite planet, suggesting a cosmic history we hadn't fathomed. Compelling evidence, from an active core to intriguing lunar landscapes, hints at a vibrant past. Mysterious cracks and moonquakes whisper that the moon might harbor untold stories within its rocky embrace. Scientists have stumbled upon vast water reservoirs and rare geological formations on the moon. These captivating discoveries are poised for in-depth scrutiny by the pioneers who will call the moon home, the Artemis missions, a cosmic rendezvous that promises to rewrite lunar history. Astronauts, astrobiologists, and even botanists will join forces for an extended lunar stay. To sustain these trailblazers, plans include not just habitation modules, but also greenhouses, where real lunar-grown food will nurture the first inhabitants of our celestial companion. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, 
Make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.